Whether it's creating really cool complex shapes or custom holders for your other components, the shell command is incredibly powerful, but there are some gotchas when it comes to what you select and some of the menu items. Let's talk about it right now. You'll find the shell command right here, or you can go to modify and do the pull down. Over in the dialog, what you select first is gonna matter. So in this case, if I don't go in and select anything on the model itself, but instead just choose it from the browser, I choose the body, or if you were to choose a component, you can type in a value and hit enter. But does it actually do anything? If we go to the timeline, I can see that there is a shell. And when I use the section analysis, I can see that this is hollowed out with a two millimeter thickness inside. So that's the first thing. When you shell, if you don't select anything at all, simply the body, it will hollow it out for you. If you come over and you choose any of these faces, these are the faces that will be removed and then it will solve the thickness that you set. So if I set that two millimeter, you can see the preview here where it's removing those faces we selected and leaving everything else at a two millimeter thickness. Let's say that you have a cube. Anything that I measure will be 100 millimeters. I can see that right here in the measurement. Now, if we come into shell, we have the option of shelling towards the inside or the outside or both. So what that means is if I were to set this to 10 millimeter thickness, that means that all of the walls will be at 10 millimeters, but my 100 millimeter exterior for each edge, this 100 millimeters will remain the same. So everything in this shell is happening in the interior. So this outer edge is 100 millimeters and this is 10 millimeters for that thickness. The alternative is that we can do the outside. So if we do 10 millimeters, it's actually gonna be enlarging this model and adding 10 millimeters to each face that we keep. If I select a face that will be removed and then the 10 millimeters will be added to each face on the exterior. And there's the both option. And what this lets you do is set a thickness to the interior and to the exterior. So I could make this really thick on the outside. So it's adding 30 millimeters to our original design and it's adding 10 millimeters towards the inset. If you're doing an outside solution, you do have this cool capability of adding rounded fillets to everything. So if I made this a two millimeter shell and then I choose this rounded shell, it's gonna add fillets to all the existing edges. Of course, if you add any additional faces, those still get removed and then it fillets what it can. Hey, have you grabbed my cheat sheet for Fusion? It's got 47 tips, it's great. If you're just getting started, it's free. Download it, here's the link right below. If you break up your shells into separate commands, doing it in multiple steps, you can get some really cool, interesting geometry. We'll go to shell and we'll just start by getting rid of a few of the faces and we're gonna do everything on this one at five millimeters, let's say. So all the walls get five millimeters. I'm going to hit okay and solve this first shell. Next, let's do another shell. So I'll right click and find repeat shell. And this time I'm gonna choose both sides of the faces, do the five millimeters again, and it'll keep these at five millimeters for these supports. And we can even do the bottom at the same time if we want to, if we'd like to have this cut away. And if we don't, we can instead just do these faces first at five millimeters. We'll solve and then repeat the command. Now, if we do the bottom, we're gonna have more of that square framing or tubing all the way around. So the order absolutely matters in providing different kinds of results. Hey, if you haven't already, be sure to check out Fusion 360 School's shelling videos. He's got some really good ones. I'll link some of those below. One thing to keep in mind, although the shell wants to do a uniform thickness across the model, if you'd like to modify or adjust one wall thickness using Q or press pull, I can select this face and I can add some material this way. And this is where you wanna be careful. The offset if you use automatic, sometimes it wants to do the entire model. And instead, what I wanna do is a brand new offset and that will give me more control. So if I add some thickness just to this face, now this wall thickness is thicker than the others. 
Another great use case for shell is to create additional components or parts that are copies of something else. Maybe it's a little bit larger, a little bit smaller. In this case, I want to create a holder for my camera and I want to 3D print it and put it on a pegboard. So what I'm going to do is copy this body. If we were with components, I'm going to do something very similar, copy and paste, but I'm going to copy this body and I'm going to paste it. We now have a second body. I'm going to hide my original body so that, that I don't do anything to that geometry. And now what I'm going to do is use this to create a larger design that will act as a holder. Real quick, I'm going to change the material color just so it can make it a little easier to see in the tutorial. I'm going to start this sketch on this face and we're going to do a split face. If you haven't seen that split face video, go check that out. It's a good one. I want to create a sketch that's going to act as our splitting tool. And I'm going to do something a little curvy just to make it a little bit more interesting. I'll hit OK. We'll finish our sketch. And now I'm going to use this as the splitter. When I want to select all these faces, I'm simply going to window select everything and it grabs them for me because I want it to split anything that it touches. It splits it. Now that this is split, we can use our shell command. And this is where it gets interesting. I want to use all of the bottom faces to add material. Everything up above, I want to remove. So I'm going to use the, again, the window selection tools. But here's a gotcha. Be sure to turn off the tangent chain when you're trying to select very specific faces. I want to grab everything on top, not on the bottom. These will be removed, the ones that are selected. Let's do a two millimeter thickness for this new design. And we want to add material to the outside of the camera. So we want to do outside so that it's adding material to this so that we could drop our camera right into this holder. Click OK. And now I have this cool custom holder that our camera could slot into. Since I'm 3D printing, I'm probably going to want to come in and maybe create a little bit more clearance just so it slides in nice and easy, especially if I'm expecting a tiny bit of shrinkage with this 3D print. Hey, I hope that helps with the shell command. Let me know in the comments down below what you've built using this tool, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.